Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Fred Martin, and I'd like to welcome you to CSTA's interview series, What is Computational Thinking? The goal of this series is to gain perspectives on computational thinking by meeting with leaders in the field. Quick introduction to me. I'm a faculty member in computer science at the University of Massachusetts Lowell. I'm university representative to CSTA, and I'm chair-elect to CSTA Board of Directors. Um, and now I'd like to um, have Pat continue. Pat, oh, so we have two Pats on the call. So uh, <laughs> Pat Phillips, please, uh, please take it away. Hi, I'm Pat Phillips, a member of the CSTA Computational Thinking Task Force, along with Fred and several others, a retired computer science teacher and editor of the CSTA Voice Newsletter. Uh, today, we're really delighted to welcome Pat Young Pratt. Um, Pat is the Chief Academic Officer at Code.org. I've um, known Pat a long time, and I'm delighted to be part of this interview with him. So welcome, Pat. Um, Fred and I have a set of questions to get our conversation started. But, but first, Pat, would you introduce yourself, maybe a bit about your background and your current position at Code? Yeah. Hi, folks, uh, live and recorded. Um, a little bit about me. I, I taught for 13 years. Uh, uh, middle school and high school, and um, the last seven years of my career, I taught um, high school computer science at a school in uh, Silver Spring, Maryland, uh, Springbrook High School. Um, and through that uh, experience, I, I gained um, just a love for computer science, computer science education, and that's what landed me here at Code.org. Um, and I, you know, leading the curriculum and professional development work at the beginning of Code.org, and now transferring to a position that focuses on national issues, things like um, standards, certification, et cetera. Thanks, Pat. And we've known each other for about a year, and um, I've really enjoyed working with you in the small way that I contributed, I, I hope, to the framework. Um, so we'd like to get started today by asking you, um, where, so the topic is computational thinking. Pat, how would you explain computational thinking to a third grader? Okay, and, and hopefully this goes down even lower than a third grader. So I thought about this a long time, and I, and I would tell a, a third grader, a second grader, even a first grader, something like this. Um, I tell them, start with a problem you want to solve um, or a thing that you want to make happen that's hard. Um, and then I would, and as they think about that, I would say maybe like cleaning your room or putting away your toys, right, if they're even younger. And then I'd tell them to pretend that they had a robot friend named Rhonda and that Rhonda has a computer brain. And I'd make sure that they understand we're talking about a robot here, but that the robot has a computer brain. So they're thinking about both. They're thinking about a physical object that will do physical things, but they also understand that the brain is a computer. And then I would tell them, you know, Rhonda doesn't speak English the way we do, so you can't just tell Rhonda to do stuff for you, like clean your room. You have to explain things to Rhonda in a very specific way that Rhonda likes. For example, in very clear steps and maybe by typing commands into a computer or moving blocks around if they're familiar with a block programming environment. Um, and then I would, you know, then the, the finishing point would be, uh, so computational thinking is the thinking that you have to do in your brain to explain things to Rhonda with her computer brain so that Rhonda can help you solve problems like cleaning your room. I think this is the best answer we've heard so far, Pat. What do you think? Um, I think so. I think so. <laughs> yeah, I love how concrete it is, Pat. And it, like your, your experience as a teacher really shines through. Well, my experience as a parent of a third grader helps as well. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Oh, good. Good answer. I was just I was trying to envision that happening with with little kids, and it's obvious it, it would work. Um, so we want to go a little bit deeper into the idea of computational thinking, and we're going to raise it up. Well, not necessarily because it's K twelve, um, but we're curious about how computational thinking is embodied in the K twelve um, computer science framework that you've been working so hard on this last year. Yeah. So. So the Association for Computing Machinery, Code.org, the Computer Science Teachers Association, um, uh, the Cyber Innovation Center, and the National Math and Science Initiative released the framework just this past Monday. You can congratulations, uh, Pat. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you, Fred. Uh, thank you, Pat. Thank you. You know, lots of people from the CSTA and the community 
for uh, advising, for writing the framework, for supporting it, for reviewing it. Thank you to, to everyone. Um, but uh, we, it was released on Monday, and uh, computer, sorry, computational thinking figures into four, not just one, but four of the seven practices in the framework. So obviously, we know that computational thinking is like a, a core aspect of computer science, and that um, I think most people believe and understand that computer science really is one of the best uh, disciplines for building uh, computational thinking skills. So in the framework, we delineate computational thinking with four different practices, recognizing and defining computational problems, developing and using abstractions, creating the actual computational artifact, and then testing and refining the computational artifact. Um, and all this information is available at k12cs.org. There's actually a page just for computational thinking in the framework. It features a great video uh, made by our friends at Google. Um, I want to give a little plug for their computational um, thinking educator uh, course. Um, and, uh, and then there's, some, there's a great diagram, a Venn diagram, actually, that describes the intersection between science and engineering practices, math practices, and computer science practices as laid out in the framework. So that's on that page um, as well, both in the PDF of the framework as well as the website for the framework. Um, so that's how com computational thinking is embodied in the framework uh, primarily. Then there are other concepts that relate to computational thinking, but the way computational thinking is really framed in the framework is that it's a, it's a, um, it's a skill um, that can be developed and one of the best ways to develop it is through computer science. I think we'll be following up on your um, comment about the the Venn diagram in a moment. Um, but now I'd I'd like to ask Pat. So we were we were you were talking about your um, experience as a teacher. How have those um, classroom experiences or or other experiences informed your current view of CT? Hmm. Well, current view of CT, current view of computer science, current view of education in general. I'll say that. Uh, you know, so this applies to CT, but applies to just education generally. Uh, the, the most important thing that we can do to develop uh, CT skills is uh, to create opportunities, projects, uh, primarily, uh, that kids feel um, uh, are relevant to their lives. Uh, so, you know, social relevance, cultural relevance, these things are so key because uh, you know, um, kids aren't uh, motivated by a grade, they're motivated simply by their personal passion. And I think all educators understand this, and I, and I, I think I wanted to emphasize this to answer your question, Fred, because um, in a computer science context, we can be uh, easily caught up in the, the technical aspect of computer science, right? Like learning a programming language or whatever. And we forget that all these things exist um, within a social context. So I would say, like my, my classroom experiences, the best times where kids learned deeply about computational thinking were times in which they were engrossed in a project that they felt was actually uh, meaningful, whether to them or to their community. And usually, and then to get to the technical stuff, it always usually included some uh, deep level of programming, um, and not just a rinky-dink program, but a, a serious program for a serious issue. Um, and specifically, if we're talking about programming, if I give a plug for my modeling and simulation friends, modeling and simulation just happens to be one of the, like I think, the, the sweet spots for computational thinking when it comes to programming and relevance and everything. I love that answer, Pat, particularly since um, you've been so uh, en engrossed in the standards development. And often, like with standards, you're thinking at the more abstract level. And this whole dimension of kids' connection to it, it's not always part of the conversation. So I really, I'm really happy to hear you say that. Yeah, thanks, Fred. Yeah, you know, the, the K 12 CS framework uh, is much more than just the concepts and practices. So they're not standards, there's, there's statements and they're more higher level than standards. They can inform standards. But um, there's much more to the framework than that. And actually, you know, the stuff I just talked about is actually in the framework. They're in, it's in other guidance chapters for the framework. So there's much more than just the, the technical grade band expectations. 
I'm kind of intrigued by the the idea, the example that you gave, I guess, of the the real world problems with um, that students solve um, with computational thinking and and computer science, and. I know from reading lots of your materials uh, that computational thinking weaves through that, but there's some other kinds of thinking, more traditionally labeled kinds of thinking. And I'm kind of curious how you see the computational thinking as distinct from other thinking skills, knowing that they all kind of mesh together once uh, when students are working on those pro projects. Yeah, it, it, you know, it's funny. It's almost, we didn't collaborate on that question, Pat, but you know, that question, is actually covered in um, the computational thinking page on the k12cs.org website. There's a section that's called uh, distinguishing computational thinking because um, I, I will say with computational thinking folks, I don't know if any other interviewee has said this already, but there is a tendency for the general education population um, to kind of stretch the bounds of what computational thinking really is to the point where they're saying, well, I, I, it's already happening in my classroom. I don't really need to do anything. You know, tying your shoes is a computational thinking task where maybe it could be, but probably it isn't. Um, and I would say the, the thing that distinguishes computational thinking from um, other skills, just like, I don't know, creating a procedure, a step-by-step -step procedure, uh, which is pretty close to computational thinking, I would say the difference is the power, understanding the power of the computer using the power of the computer and following the rules of the computer, which in this case is just the rules of computation in general. Like the precision is very important. Uh, the understanding of automation and abstraction, these things are very important. So simply a, a kid tying their shoes, I don't think is a computational thinking task, even though it, is an, uh, it could be an iterative task or a task with multiple steps. I think uh, the way to distinguish computational thinking from other skills that are really close is like someone has to have a mental model of the computer in their head while they're thinking through uh, a problem and then the problem should manifest itself in a computational situation um, usually a, a computer. I, I suspect that problem of the misunderstanding um, my guess, uh, resulted from early days of computational thinking, trying to make it be um, uh, um, doable uh, yes. by people who were not familiar or, or maybe not even comfortable with thinking about the way computers work. So we said, oh, you can have your kids do this, this, and this, and it's computational thinking, and we didn't carry it far enough to say, um, there's a lot more to it, but this is the first little step. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. A lot of nuance to it. That's the thing about it. A lot of nuance. Right, right. So is, is there anything else that you would like to add about any of these questions or anything else that's on your mind about computational thinking and the things you'd like to tell um, people who view this video? Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan. You know, Fred talk, alluded to my education career, my teaching career. I'm a big fan of repetition just because uh, I, I feel like people need it. So I'll summarize like my big points that we've already covered um, uh, succinctly here. So number one, you know, I talked about um, how to explain computational thinking to a third grader. And, and what I did was I made it very concrete and physical. And I talked about a robot and not just a, a computer or computer program. I love that. But yeah, I, 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 just, I just feel like that's really, really necessary um, for young kids specifically, but even for older folks. Um, and then I, and I anthropomorphized it as, as well, and that was on purpose. Um, and then, uh, so people, elementary school educators, if you're talking about computational thinking, that's a, a great way to explain it to them, to make it explicit so that they know what they're doing. They have some sort of metacognition around like the skills that they're developing in your class. Um, you know, and then, you know, how is CT embodied in the K-12CS framework? Well, it's all over the place, it's in four, of the seven practices. We have a specific page on our website about computational thinking. Um, it's, it's in, uh, I believe it's in the beginning of chapter five in the framework as well. There's a beautiful Venn diagram that we spent a lot of time creating to describe the intersection between uh, the different practices in science and engineering, math and, and computer science. So please um, make use of that. And, and I think the last thing is that, um, oh, sorry, two more things. Programming, 
is an awesome way to learn computational thinking. It's kind of like a no duh. And then specifically modeling and simulation. If folks, if you haven't, if you haven't been putting modeling and simulation in your class, you you really have to. It is, it's it's just a wonderful way to make this stuff come alive. Um, and then lastly, uh, you know, how do you distinguish computational thinking? Well, let's just not get uh, carried away with saying everything is computational thinking. How do you distinguish it? Well, you know, you have to be thinking about an actual computer and how the computer will solve the problem. Um, you know, how you work hand in hand with the computer. And also the idea of following the computer's rules, which are rules that we made up as humans, but still the computer itself is an external thing that has rules. We need to follow those rules, uh, the rules of precision, rules of sequence. If you're doing that, you're computationally thinking. If, if not, you're just doing something that's similar, but it isn't computational thinking. Pat, if I could reinforce something you said when you were giving the robot analogy, after you explained the robot, and I'm sorry, what was your name? Rhonda. Rhonda, and, and you explain Rhonda has a computer and you have a special way of talking to Rhonda. You emphasize that the CT is the thinking that you do, that is your thinking, the human thinking, um, that, that that's what makes it the CT. Exactly, yep. Computational thinking, computers, they're, I mean, they're just all human creations anyway. We just, we just deigned these powers to this external agent to help us do other things, which is something that humans have done since the you know, dawn of time, we've given other things agency to do things for us, right? So that we can do, tackle other things. It's, it's great, us humans. <laughs> Pat, thank you so much. Uh, I've really enjoyed this conversation and it's been great working with you. Um, and thank you for taking the time to share your insights with us. Yeah, thank you for having me, folks. Indeed. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.